I'm Susan LeBlanc, and this is Conversations with the Goodman School of Business. And my guest today is Holly Postlewaite. Hello. Hi, <laughs> how are you? I'm doing great. Great. Holly is from Steam Whistle, yes. Steam Whistle Brewery. And what is it that you do there? You are the... We um, do one thing really, really well. Yeah. We make one beer. It's our premium Pilsner. Yeah. And that's what we dedicate all our energy and focus to. And your job within? My job is I am the PR and marketing coordinator okay. there. So I kind of work between the two roles, doing public relations and also managing, coordinating our sampling right. program. So, and that's, I find that really interesting because you do one thing really, really well. Yes. So, and you've got a dedication to that. Yes. There's no, <laughs> there's no plans to expand beyond that. No. Nope. So how do you keep that fresh? Um, you know what? I got to give credits to, you know, Greg and Cam and the whole team and the marketing team because to keep it fresh you know we'll come out with new packaging um, we'll release you know thematics um, for example it's St. Patrick's Day so mm -hmm. we are releasing a one liter boot um, so that keeps it fresh in the mind and also we're pretty innovative when it comes to being a huge community supporter and also our sustainability issues so by being able to talk about those things right. it keeps it fresh and relevant and you know, the beer speaks for itself, mm -hmm. so I think that's yeah. the way we can keep doing one thing really, really well. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you have a great space that you do this one thing. Oh, yeah. Um, you're in, it's called the, the Round Roundhouse, yes. right? In uh, right downtown Toronto. At very, um, maybe explain a little bit about what that, oh, that was, sure. what it was and what it is and, and sort of the culture yeah. working there now. It's, um, I honestly feel like every day is going to my dream job. It is yeah. my dream job. Uh, we joke around that. The Roundhouse is the Willy Wonka for adults because it's just a fun house. We work hard, but right. we play hard. But you're, you're working hard on beer. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. So it's great. And our building is actually, it's the John Street Roundhouse. So it used to work as a CP repair facility. Mm -hmm. So it actually used to repair old locomotives that helped shape our nation. So when they found the building, it was like literally dirt floors and had to be rebuilt right. brick by brick. And with that, they brought in, like I was mentioning, all these cool green initiatives. Mm -hmm. We, you know, have steam heating that heats and brews our beer. We use um, bullfrog power, so our whole brewery, the, all the electricity is um, from renewable sources. Uh, we use deep lake water cooling to cool our brewery. So they took this old building and brought it up right. to speed and then built this beautiful brew house and housed all this good beer folk in there. Right. And we right. get to work every day and basically an old train museum, you know? Right, wow. yeah. It's it's, it's cool. a really interesting uh, building and a really um, uh, vibrant part of the city now. Oh, which, yeah. Because uh, I, I, I remember when I first saw it a few years ago, there wasn't really much happening around the city, but now it's like, wow. It's booming. There's been a lot of growth. Even I've been with Steam Whistle just under two right. years. I've seen hotels been built and uh, condos and restaurants. and. Right. I was, uh, my boss, Sybil Taylor, she's one of the brewery's first employee, employees and also the communications director. And when the brewery was first built, like you said, it was pretty, you know, desolate down yeah, there. Yeah. And taxi cab drivers wouldn't kind of head past that Queen Street East or Queen Street West you right, know, right. zone. So she actually hosted a big breakfast for all the taxi drivers to have them Come, you know, this, seat, this <laughs> side, this come, side of the track. Come, come see what, yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's not that bad here. Exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and now I'm sure they're, they're happy to go there because it, it's oh, just yeah. a great, spot, great spot, spot in the city now. For sure. Yeah. So you work um, in fully integrated uh, marketing campaigns. Can you tell us a little bit about that? What, how does that work with the Steam Whistle? For philosophy? sure. So we have a team of about 10 people in our marketing crew. We do everything in-house. We're a craft brewery and... You know, we're, it's important to us to not hire outside agencies. We want to be true. Right. Um, so when we're developing a campaign, there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of people, you know, playing a part right. in that. So if we look at our Oktoberfest um, promotion that ran in September, October, mm -hmm. Oktoberfest is actually in September, which many people don't right. know. Yes, it is. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, Oktoberfest is something near and dear to us. Uh, we make a Czech-style beer, or Pilsner is from mm -hmm. Czech. And so on your five-year anniversary at the brewery, you actually get sent on an all-expense-paid trip down to check to tour the breweries and then wow. finish at Munich Oktoberfest. So we wanted to kind of bring this story and celebration home, so mm -hmm. we started releasing a one-liter Oktoberfest stein. 
So when we released that campaign, it just happened a few months ago, there was an online component, um, me managing PR and sampling. I managed all the samplers dressed in later hosen yeah. and dirndls at sampling experiences. Uh, PR, we did um, cooking with beer recipes that were, you know, Oktoberfest themed. We had displays on the LCBO. But while all that is happening in one time frame, those LCBO displays, you know, might have been booked a year in advance. Those television segments were actually scheduled or pitched six or months or three months wow. in advance. Yeah. So working together, because that campaign is rolling out or being developed, mm -hmm. you know, over a long period of time, communication is key. And what one of the most beautiful things about Steam Whistle is we really have an integrated team and you're not siphoned off, you know, in your position. And if you have an idea or a suggestion, it's open door policies. So it's just really back and forth communication and making sure everyone knows what the other person is doing. Great. Yeah, yeah. it sounds like it's a, a, a wonderful um, uh, atmosphere and culture to oh, work in. Yeah. 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 It's, um, they really work hard on making an inclusive um, culture and just open door policy. You know, Cam and Greg, they don't, their offices aren't. You know, in this high rise, they right. sit with everybody else. They're right there with you. Yeah, yeah. in the same size desk. Yeah. You know, I go yeah. and talk to Greg. I'm like, hey, I got an idea. He's yeah. like, let me hear it. Wow. So that's yeah. nice. And you haven't had your your five year trip. To no, check yet. only at two years. No, three more so to go. We got a few more to go. <laughs> yeah. Yet. Yeah. Now you're here uh, today because you're speaking uh, to a Professor Antonia Mantanakis' yes. class, and I know you've done that a couple of times yeah. before. So what what brings you out to classrooms like that? Why, why do you come, and and what do you get out of it? Um. So part of it's kind of you know personal. I want to say you know, satisfaction in the sense that I remember being a student right. at that time. You know, it wasn't so long ago. I graduated like 10 years ago. Um, and being able to connect with people and speak to them about something that I love so much, but also open their eyes to a career or a brand or opportunities mm -hmm. that you might not know when you learn in, you know, right. when you're in school. Um, I also think it's so fun to kind of step out of my day-to-day -day job sure. and yeah. see what what are the questions they have? What do they know about Steam right. Whistle? And right. also just help and meet people. A lot of the times I'll get calls afterwards for informational interviews or follow-up questions. And I remember being a student and right. it's kind of so. nice to give back, even though that sounds a little corny, but. Yeah, but, well, but it, it is, it yeah. is nice. And I know, um, I think it's Cam has been by yes. speaking here. So we, we have sort of, and I'm sure it's always in, in Professor Mantanakis' class, but um, she has a long history of having Steam Whistle speak to her students. Yeah, we and, love her students. They're very engaged. Yeah, they ask great yeah, questions. And yeah. She's wonderful as yeah, well. she so is. We keep coming back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, I, and, and we love having you. It's, it's you. great. So if you, if you have any advice to give to students, yeah. what would what would that be? Um, I would say I know everyone probably says this, but don't give up when you're going for those job opportunities. You might send out, you know, forty or eighty resumes. It's a tough competition out there, but be genuine. Um, don't you know cut and paste a resume. Take the time mm -hmm. to get to know that company because they're taking. The, you want them to get to know you. Right. Um, and I would say. Informational interviews, that was kind of, you know, my foot into the door mm -hmm. when I first started is finding out what people do, making those connections, and just, um, yeah, not giving up. And you might not enter where you want to be, but you can work to right where you want to get to. Yeah. So that sounds yeah. like sound advice. <laughs> thank That's you. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much for coming and doing the podcast. Thank and you. thank you for coming and speaking to our students. My pleasure. Yeah, and thank you for uh, watching and listening. And uh, be sure to check out some of the other Brock podcasts. There's Consider This, which is a research-based podcast and talks about all the great research happening here at Brock University. And um, I think that's it for this episode. Thank you again. Thank you for having and me. And thank you for watching.